So welcome to today's lesson. And um, in today's lesson, we'll be talking about matrix norms. So um Budo Kanrin of a third year student of mathematics in ESD. And I'm going to take you through this lesson. So please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and please like the video if it helps you. So note that in our previous lesson, we talked about the vector norms, where we discussed the one norm, the two norm, and the infinity norm. So we will be discussing the equivalence of those norms for matrices. So we talk about the one norm, the two norm, the um, of infinity norm, and the Frobenius norm, except that in the matrix norms, they are a bit different, okay? So we will use them to solve or to find the various types of matrix norms with this particular matrices. So matrix Q, which is a 3 by 3, matrix and matrix M, which is a 4 by 4 matrix. So let's first start with the one norm. Okay, so the one norm in matrix is also known as the column norm. So the formula is given us, the, this is the notation, so here the A here is a matrix and this is the notation and it is given as the maximum value of S1, S2 up to Sm. So what are our S's? Our S's are just the sum of the absolute values in each column. So we are going to use that to solve this particular question here. So when we have a matrix, we know that this is the row and this is the column. Right, so this matrix here is 3 by 3, it has 3 rows and 3 columns. So that means that the whole of this <coughs> is column 1, this is column 2, and this is column 3. So that means this is going to be um, our S1 is going to be the sum of the absolute values here, S2 will be the sum of the absolute values here, and this will be for S3. So you see here, because you just have three columns, then our one norm is going to be the maximum of x1, x2, x3, because we only have three columns here. So you realize that s1 is going to be computed as the absolute value of this plus that of this plus that of this. So as you can see here, and when you make this computation, you're going to get 4 plus 5 plus 2, which is 11. Then we go to S2. So S2 is going to be that of the second column. So as you can see here. So that would be 1 plus 1 plus 8, which would be 10. And X3 is going to be that of the third row. So that one is going to be 12. So this is our S1, S2, and S3. So you realize that the maximum of these three values is 12. So that means our one norm for Hill matrix is 12. Then let's come with our M matrix here. So our M matrix here is 4 by 4. So we have four columns. So where these are column 1, column 2, column 3, and column 4. So you realize that that means the one norm of it is just going to be the maximum of one of these, right? So the maximum of these values here are S1, S2, S3, S4, where S1 is the sum of the absolute values in the first column, S2 in the second column, S3 in the third, and S4 in the fourth. So note that these are column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. So S1 is just going to be the sum of the magnitude or the absolute values here, which is going to give us 14. So that of S2 is also going to give us 14. That of S3, 14. And that of S4, 14. So you realize that X1, X2, X3, X4, both give, like all of them give us 14. So that means the maximum value here is 14. So the one norm of our M matrix here is 14. So that's it with the one norm. It's very, very simple. All right, so let's move on and let's go to the maximum absolute rule sum norm. 
So that's the infinity norm in the case of our matrix. So you realize that with the one norm, we're dealing with columns. So the difference between that one and this one is that while that one de dealt with column, this one is going to deal with rules. So it's the same formula, but here, so this is a formula, this is a notation, this is a formula. But here are S1, S2, S3, rather are the sum of the absolute values in each row. So remember, that of the one norm was in each column, but this one is in each row. So when we come to this particular question here, that means this is going to be our row 1, row 2, and row 3, because rows are this way. So we have three rows. So that means that S1 is going to be the sum of the absolute values here. This will be S2. And this will be S3. So S1 is just the absolute value of negative 4 plus the absolute value of 1 plus that of 10, which gives us 15. S2 will be um, that's of the absolute value of this plus this plus this, the absolute value. And that is going to give us 7. And X3 is going to be that of the third row, so 2 plus 8 plus 1 which gives us 11 so remember s1 is 15 s2 is 7 s3 is 11 so the maximum of these three values is our 15 so that means that 15 is the norm i hope you get it now let's go to our second matrix m so here too we have this to be row 1 row 2 row 3 it needs to be real 4 so we can see them here we have s1 s2 s3 s4 because s1 is going to be the sum of the absolute values here is going to be s3 2 the sum of the absolute values in the second row s3 the sum of the absolute value in the third row and this is going to be x4 so that means s1 will simply be absolute value of negative 1 plus absolute value of negative 1 plus absolute value of two, 10 plus absolute value of negative 2 which gives us 14 so that's what you can see here then s2 will simply be that of the second row so i hope i've shown you what, what the second row is and what the third row is so that's the absolute value of 10 plus absolute value of negative 2 plus absolute value of negative 1 plus absolute value of negative 1 which will also be 14 and S3 will be that of the third row, which will also be 14. And S4 will be that of the fourth row, which will be 14 as well. So all of them are 14. Definitely the highest is 14. Since they are all 14. So that means that the norm for that one is going to be 14. So, so we are done with that one too. So we've done the one norm and We've also discussed the maximum absolute true norm. So now let's go to the third type of matrix norm that we'll be talking about. That's the um, Fibrinos or the Euclidean norm. So that one is giving us so because this one is Fibrinos, we have F here. If you are using Igli, the Euclidean, then that means you are going to have an E here, right? So it's giving us this formula here. So what this formula means is that you find the absolute value of all the elements in your matrix, square them, add them, and after that you find the square root of them. So don't worry, as we solve questions with it, you realize it is quite simple, okay? So with this particular matrix here, Q, so you realize that it is 3 by 3. And as a result, we have nine elements. So that means to find the Fibrinus norm, we will have to find the absolute values of all the nine elements, square them, add them. After that, we find the square root of the sum of the sum. So <clears throat> the Fibrinus norm of this RQ here is going to be the absolute value of negative four squared plus that of one squared, that of ten squared. You can see all the elements in our geometry here. That's of 5 squared, negative 1 squared. So we find it for all the elements here. And when you compute the inner, the one inside the bracket, we get 
two one two three and note that raised to the power half is the same as root so we get root of two one three which gives us 14.594520 that's in six decimal places we want to leave it in six decimal places all right so <clears throat> let's go to our second matrix so our second matrix is a four by four matrix so that means we have 16 elements here all right so 16 entries here so that means you have to find the absolute value of each of them square them and find the sum and after that we find the root of the sum so that's going to be negative one absolute value of negative one squared plus absolute value of negative one squared so this plus this then plus absolute value of 10 squared plus absolute value of negative 2 squared so we do it for all of them and when you do that you are going to get 4 to 4 so the raised to the power half here means we have to find the root of the resulting sum so root of 4 to 4 which gives us 20.591260 so that's to 6 decimal places so that's it so it's left with the true norm which is called the spectra norm so this is a bit complicated because with this you have to be doing matrix matrix multiplication so matrix multiplication and we know how matrix multiplication can be tedious sometimes and we also have to find argument values so because of the um because of how complex it's not that complex but how special this spectral norm is we are going to discuss that alone in a video because it's going to take long so in our next video we will discuss the spectral norm and with those two matrices that we had we will learn how to find the spectral norms for them in our next video so please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos and please like the video if it helps you